Hey friends and students, I'm Chris, I run an online ESL course and I'm here to give you part three of my speech in Mexico on how to question social institutions. Please watch the first two videos before you watch this one so that you know what I'm talking about. In the first video in this series, I mentioned that I lived in Uruguay for, uh, for a few months in 1999. In 2000, I went back to Canada and started going to university. Eventually, I decided to major in political science. Now, don't let the name fool you. There's nothing scientific about studying politics or if there is, it's not what they talk about in political science. We learned a bunch of theories about how things work and how to argue in favor of each of them. So if there's something I know a little bit about, I can make an argument for or against it. But the problem is we never applied our theories and our logic to the big picture. For example, I could debate whether or not it's practical to use the military to fight terrorists. But there are better questions that we should be asking. Like, why do people get called terrorists? Why should we believe these people are terrorists? Or that the word terrorism is as evil as they want us to believe? What are they not telling us? And how could I find out? <laughs> In political science, we learned this ability to argue, but with no firm understanding of what we were arguing for. In the end, we basically had all kinds of excuses for the status quo. The status quo basically just means the way things are right now. Yeah, I was still interested in the subjects that I'd started to learn in university, like, you know, politics, history, economics, philosophy, psychology, all the things we study in my ESL course. So I kept reading. Just reading one or two books about something is, I find it's never enough. Because when you read more, you start to realize everything that was wrong in the first book or first books that you read. Soon after I graduated, Facebook came out. Now, I don't know what you use Facebook for, but I've been using it for like 12 years now, mostly to learn. I follow people who post things that interest me, and I learn new things every day. I follow my curiosity. All learning should be about following your curiosity, and social media are great for that. One thing Facebook taught me, or I suppose I could say one thing I learned from the people I follow on Facebook, is how to unlearn. To unlearn. Hmm. Have you ever heard this word before? You could probably guess what it means to learn about what uh, something you think is wrong. It means changing your beliefs, upgrading them from definitely wrong to less wrong, or possibly correct. You don't have to be sure of everything. I went to Egypt eight years ago in 2011. I won't talk too much about that, but it certainly gave me uh, some insight. Do you remember what was happening in Egypt and the wider Middle East at that time? Revolution, comrades! I got to see the things I had been studying. A popular revolt, or an uprising, and the police state's violent reaction to it. I got to see places 
with no police that were doing just fine. I talked to people online who said that without police, surely it would be chaos, that everyone would be running around screaming and burning things. But it wasn't. I could tell them from experience that wasn't true. A few years earlier, I would have been one of those people saying it would be chaos. But I found out that's not the way it is. In Egypt, I started my blog, which is called The Rule of Freedom. I'm not going to give you a link because I don't really recommend that you go there and look at any of my early posts on that blog. I thought of myself as very well informed on the right subject so I could have a loud opinion on everything. But I still had so much to learn. So people corrected me about everything. And sometimes I would argue and fight, but what they said still influenced me. I also realized at this time I was unlearning a lot of what I had learned in university about all those subjects, history, politics, economics, etc. But a lot of the things I was learning at that time were wrong too. So I'm still unlearning. Unlearning is a really long process with no clear end to it. Um, and what all that means is my blog, which I started writing eight years ago, is full of stuff I don't believe anymore. Sometimes people tell me something five times or ten times before I understand or agree with what they're telling me. Those people have been great for making me doubt my beliefs. We tend to think of doubt as bad, right? But why? because we have to be sure about everything, I find the truth is often ambiguous, not clear one way or another. We should learn to live with ambiguity and doubt. Sometimes I've had doubts and immediately crushed them. No, bad doubt. Bad doubt making me question things. What I think is always right. <laughs> but hey, if you doubt something, it might be for a good reason. I was in Egypt for five years, and when I came back to Canada, I was bringing new perspectives with me. I had spent years of learning and unlearning. I was seeing Canada with new eyes. And I don't feel the same about living there anymore. I realize now Canada is a settler colonial state, in other words, uh, an old part of an empire that exists pretty much just to oppress the native people and take their resources. I could never have understood that growing up in all white neighborhoods like I did. I walk along streets with names of colonizers, wondering how the native people feel about it, or feel about me. I see police kicking homeless people out of public spaces where they were sleeping. I see people living in poverty, in other words, being poor. I never saw poverty before. I learned to see it. Because before it was normal, invisible, part of how things work. But since I've been away, I've realized poverty is made by humans. It only exists in these artificial systems, like capitalist states. It's not inevitable or unavoidable. None of the social institutions I've been talking about are inevitable. Some of them can be changed and made to work for us. Some of them should be thrown out. And because I've had the privilege of learning and unlearning so much, 
I wanted to spread my knowledge and perspective and ideas to others like you. So this year I started my two YouTube channels. And now I look like an authority. <laughs> so surely that means you should question me too, right? So how do you think you could question the things that I've said here? I'll let you figure that out. I hope this series has helped you learn to question things more. If you need any more help, write me a comment and we'll talk about it. Oh, and please like this video and subscribe to my channel and you'll get lots more videos like it.